Hey everyone, finished watching the next Dino Thunder episode, Golden Boy. This episode's alright. <laughs> I don't really have any strong connection to this episode one way or the other. So, summary, the episode starts right up with a Megazord battle. And uh, when the monster's defeated, Elsa and Zeltrax are watching through screens back at the island fortress. And they start arguing with each other about what it would take to make a stronger monster and... There's a weird bit where Zeltrax mentions Mesagog being a father figure to him. Alright, kind of weird. So they go on bantering for a while, and Zeltrax decides he's going to put himself into the genome randomizer, theorizing it might make him stronger. So he goes in and comes out not feeling any different, but then behind him comes Goldenrod. This little gold thing that kind of looks like him. Goldenrod calls Zeltrax father and tells him he wants to serve him, and at this point in the show, Zeltrax sees this little gold thing as a, a potential monster to send uh, to fight the rangers. And at Haley's cyberspace, Trent's busy waiting on customers. Cassidy is being rude, Devin tells her to stop, and when she doesn't, Ethan plays a prank on her, somehow hacking her laptop and making it scream at her when she presses buttons. It's a better prank than setting off the school sprinklers, I guess. Trent's father shows up and he tells Trent that he thinks this current job is beneath him and he should have a managerial position and because this current job is beneath someone of his status. And Trent's like, I like this job, though. Then Mercer leaves. Okay. I guess he just wanted to pop in and remind us that he's going to be a villain later. Zeltrax opens up an Invisiportal and sends Goldenrod through to get Tommy. Then back at cyberspace, Tommy's talking to Trent about Mercer, and he says after so many years of working with Mercer, Mercer never mentioned having a son, and Trent explains that he was adopted a few years ago after his parents died in an accident. And then Tommy's driving Trent somewhere, when suddenly they realize they're being chased on foot by Goldenrod. Tommy stops and the monster attacks him, Trent leaps in to protect his teacher, and... There's a really weird thing that goes on here. When Trent jumps in to defend Tommy from Goldenrod, he, like, jumps, like, right over the whole jeep. And nothing is... It's not drawn attention to or anything. Like, this is apparently just something he can do, I guess. And also, uh, let's see, there's a scene where Goldenrod picks up Trent and throws him, and he, like, f hovers in the air a little bit. The wire work in this part of the episode is really weird and floaty. Like, I've never... I've rarely seen this in Power... Uh, there are a few scenes in Power Rangers where, yeah, the wire works are kind of floaty, but for it to happen, like, throughout this entire fight is kind of weird. And the other rangers arrive to help, and Zeltrax comes to take that golden rod back to the island fortress. Zeltrax tries to make his son stronger by putting him back into the genome randomizer. Trent makes it home, and... He asks his father about why he and Dr. O don't hang out anymore, and his father tells him that, well, some people drift in and out of your life. And then Mercer goes on to uh, inform Trent that he's bought Haley's cyberspace, and he wants to give Trent a higher position there. And when Trent tells him that isn't what he wants, Mercer says that, you sound ungrateful, and insists that this is what's best for you. The next day, Haley shows Tommy Mercer's paperwork, Tommy and Ethan decide to go see someone at uh, City Hall about it, and Trent goes along, feeling partially responsible for all this. Tommy says he has a friend who works at the uh, the City Hall, uh, Councilwoman Sanchez. How do they know each other? Oh, whatever. Goldenrod and Zeltrax attack, and Trent and uh, Councilwoman Sanchez uh, go hide for cover, and while they're hiding, he's like, Hey, I have something to uh, discuss with you about uh, my father buying the cyberspace. Tommy and Ethan are fighting Goldenrod and Zeltrax. Connor and Ethan show up. Zeltrax calls the Tyrannodrones, which made me wonder, where are the Triptoids? Are... Where did they put them? Since they have the Triptoids, why didn't they mix them in with the Tyrannodrones? Send both of them at once. Zeltrax orders Goldenrod to attack the city. Oh, and this is... The one time in the episode where they say Goldenrod's name, and it goes by so quick I missed it the first time, I had to rewind, because Zeltrax has such a deep voice, it's kind of muffled under the effect or whatever they put on it, so he goes, Goldenrod, I'll take the fitter. 
The Rangers get the Megazord. They fight with Goldenrod. Tommy joins in on foot because the Brachiozord is useless. And he uses his Brachio staff. He uh, slams it to the ground, creates this big chasm that shoots up smoke and lightning somehow, and that destroys Goldenrod. Zeltrax watches, lamenting the loss of his son. You took from me the only family I've ever known. I'll get my revenge, Tommy Oliver. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure a lot will come of that. Very important. It's not important. So then Trent goes home, and he sees an Invisiportal. He touches it and gets transported away. Then Mercer arrives at the cyberspace, planning to tear it down. He's greeted by Councilwoman Sanchez, who tells him that his purchase has been put on hold thanks to his son. I'll talk about that later. Trent falls through the Invisi portal right outside Haley's cyberspace, and Ethan uh, goes up and he's like, Dude, we saved the cyberspace thanks to your help. And Trent's like, Oh, uh, uh, yeah. And then that's where the episode ends. Kind of a weird place to end it. Like, or, well, not really a weird place to end it, just weird to end it with Trent going through an Invisi portal for no real reason. It's an okay episode. I kind of like it, but I, I don't know, it's really hard to say that I like it, because it's just kind of bland and basic, and it's not, like, this episode needed a Beldorf, I think. <laughs> Some parts of this episode are kind of weird. They feel like they're trying to lay clues about who the villains are. Zeltrax saying Mesagog is his father figure, Trent talking about his parents' death and Mesagog's absence and Mercer's prominence. Only one of those really ends up being, like, a, a real clue to something. Goldenrod stands out in this episode. He's a unique monster. Zeltrax actually bonds with him. It would have been nice to see some more of that. I think probably more of the episode should have been focused around Goldenrod and Zeltrax, but considering... Goldenrod's going to be completely forgotten after this episode. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Initially, Zeltrax doesn't see Goldenrod as anything more than another monster, but gradually, as the episode goes on, he sees him as, yeah, he's my son. I love him. And then at the end, he sees him get destroyed by Tommy, this guy that he supposedly has a grudge against. So, it really feels like this should be a big moment for Zeltrax, but it kind of just passes by and then it's forgotten after this. Kind of disappointing. Cassidy and Devin are featured heavily at the beginning of this episode, then just kind of fade away, and then they pop up again when Tommy and Ethan and uh, Trent go to see the City Hall. For some reason, they follow them. I guess Cassidy wants to get an interview with someone, but couldn't she just go on her own? Uh. And then when Zeltrax and Goldenrod show up, they run out in front, and kind of similar to uh, the other time Donkey Vac was attacking, they go out and try to interview him. When they're in front of the monster, the rangers just disappear for a while. Do, do Cassidy and Devin have some kind of superpower that freezes the rangers in time? Like, if they get in front of the monsters? Uh. And another weird thing, they get blown away into the bushes. Nobody cares. Tommy doesn't say anything. Ethan doesn't say anything. I mean, they get up and they're totally fine, but it's just kind of weird that civilians just got attacked by the monsters. They don't even say anything about it later in the episode. Anton Mercer comes off in this episode just below cartoonish villain. No matter what Anton Mercer says, there's always something behind it that implies that he has something more in mind than just what's best for Trent. This is similar to Mr. Collins and Wes from Time Force, where Mr. Collins was, like, he'd do things that you might consider in the wrong, but it's clear that he's, like, if there is anything wrong with them, he doesn't really see it that way. What he's doing is he's trying to, like, do what's best for Wes. And when Wes denies it, he's kind of confused. He's not mad at him or anything. He's just kind of confused because he's like, why would you give up an opportunity to make money? Because that's the main thing in his head is what makes the most money? Whatever makes the most money is automatically the most good. And like, Wes doing what he enjoys doesn't really occur to him. With uh, Mr. Mercer, I don't know, it just, it doesn't feel the same way at all. He comes off a bit more like Carl Zichter. He's like slightly below Carl Zichter, cartoonish villain. 
Tommy's talk with Trent implies that even more time has passed uh, since that explosion at the beginning of uh, Dino Thunder. Dino Thunder's timeline is really weird. Like, Mercer looks old enough for all this to make some sense, but Tommy doesn't look old at all. Maybe he had an Energem with him. Hmm. <laughs> the fight between Trent and Goldenrod is really weird. Like I said, Trent's thrown around and the wire work is really floaty. And it's nowhere near Power Rangers' usual standard. Like, it stands out because of how it's often not even noticeable. During the Zord battle, Tommy joins, but not with the Brachiozord because it's useless. I'm kind of surprised the Brachiozord hasn't become a meme because of how useless it is. Like, it really serves no purpose. Like, maybe it's part of the Ultra Zord later or something? Tommy did apparently learn from last time, and he doesn't jump up at it. He stays back a ways, so he uh, keeps his distance. Councilwoman Sanchez, really just the ending with her is kind of weird. Like, this has not aged... This wasn't even good then. Um, she really should have known better than to tell Mercer it was his son who convinced her to delay his purchase of Haley's cyberspace. That seems like really unnecessary information to disclose. Like, there's a reason why teachers aren't supposed to out like LGBT students to their parents because they don't know if their parent is actually like a lizard monster in their spare time. Like, I know she doesn't know that he's a villain and that there might be dangerous repercussions to him knowing this information, but come on, lady, don't out Trent to this guy. I don't know why you would do that. Um, oh yeah, Mesagog doesn't appear in this episode. That's really weird. Although, I'm wondering if maybe that was intentional. Mercer has a prominent role. Was this supposed to be a clue to his true identity? Also, Elsa's in this episode and does nothing. She really didn't need to be here at all, either. Um, like, she argues with Zeltrax at the beginning, but it doesn't really amount to anything. As a standalone episode, this episode's fine. It's definitely not one of my favorites, even so far this season. Game On's my favorite, along with the first episode. <laughs> so yeah, not a lot to this one, but it's okay. Now that he's wet, he's completely useless. Just kidding. He didn't need the water to become useless because in his heart, he knows that he never had a use.